stories. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala at the time of his death and shaitan appearing to him in a dream and saying to him, Oh Ahmad, you escaped. I could a powerful hadith. And before I even mention the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jazakallah Khair, uh, Hafid Iftar read the verse, Allah is the one who accepts the repentance of his servants. And Allah pardons all of their sins. And Allah knows that which you do. And SubhanAllah, if you're reading the verse, it's as if Allah Subhanahu wa is answering the secondary whispers that you might have. Allah accepts the repentance of his servants. Okay, but but what about those sins? All of them are gone. But Allah knows I'm not like those people that do so much and that worship so much. Allah knows what you do. Allah knows who you are. Allah knows how he created you. And remember the hadith yesterday about the conversation between Allah and the angels about us. About us, right? Who remembers what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels about forgiving the servant that continues to commit the same sin, but tries over and over again to quit it and asks Allah for forgiveness? Who remembers what Allah tells the angels? Anyone? Anyone other than Shaykh Yasser? Shaykh Yasser, please don't answer. Zakallah khair. What is it? Yes, Allah says to the angels, Bear witness that I have forgiven this person. Why? Because he knew that he had a Lord that forgives sins. His knowledge of Allah as a Lord that is forgiving caused me to forgive him. That's why he keeps on calling on to me. That's why he doesn't despair. Like I'm too shy to call upon Allah at this point because I haven't done enough. That's between Allah and the angels. Now the hadith I'm going to share with you tonight, it's an amazing hadith, it's short and simple, but it is a powerful hadith. It's narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, who we spoke about a few nights ago, who narrated to us the incident of Laylatul Qadr with the Prophet ﷺ. This hadith is an authentic hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad. He said that the Prophet ﷺ said, قَالَ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaytan said to Allah, وَعِزَّتِكَ يَا رَبْ By your might, O Lord, لا أبرح أغوي عبادك ما دامت أرواحهم في أجسادهم. I will not give up on leading your slaves astray as long as their souls are still in their bodies. Subhanallah, look at that challenge. And this is a conversation he's telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shaitan consumes himself in his anger in his jealousy, in his hatred, in his despair. He's constantly, literally burning up on the inside. So he says to Allah, Ya Rabb, O oh Allah, know that I will not give up leading them astray as long as their souls are still in their bodies. Meaning to the last moment when the soul leaves the body, I'm going to lead them astray. I'm never going to give up on them. I'm never going to give up on them, right? What does this mean? You know, we've heard so many stories. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala at the time of his death and shaitan appearing to him in a dream and saying to him, Oh Ahmad, you escaped. I could never get you. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah said, don't even think about it. Not yet. Laysa ba'd. Not yet. Not until I leave from this world will I put my guard down from you. But he's telling Allah, I will never give up on them. Meaning what? I don't care how religious he is. Shaitan has seen some pretty religious people fall. He's been able to whisper into the hearts of scholars, into the hearts of people that were on their way to being martyrs, into generous people. He has been able to whisper into the hearts and cause the destruction of some pretty great people. And he, of course, came from a very high position to the lowest of low. But I will never give up on them. I don't care how religious they are. I will never give up on them. What was the answer of Allah? Does anyone know? I want someone to... What do you think Allah responded to shaitan with? Allah responded to shaitan. وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَا أَزَالُ أَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ مَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Bear witness, O devil, by my might, by my majesty, I will never stop forgiving them 
as long as they keep asking me for my forgiveness. What kind of a Rabb are you dealing with? What kind, I mean, subhanAllah, if you could, you know, the people made idols because they wanted to make their gods and own them. And the Quran tells us, you could not fashion a Lord better than Allah for you. What kind of a Rabb are you calling upon? What kind of a merciful Lord are you calling upon? Now here's the thing about this hadith. You could walk away from it and say, mercy, alhamdulillah. Allah could have responded to shaitan, and Allah could have said to the shaitan, I will keep on calling them to good until they die. Right? Meaning, it still goes back to them, how they're going to end up at the end of the day. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it back on him so long as they are seeking forgiveness. Whether it's major or minor, whether it is a relapse or it's the first time, so long as they are in a state of istighfar, so long as they are in a state of seeking forgiveness, I will forgive them. Dear brothers and sisters, forgiveness, the seeking of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes at the end of everything that we do. The end of salah. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِ هُمْ يَذْكُرُونَ Allah. No. At the end of the night, at the suhoor time, هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ They're seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does Allah find them? Istighfar, istighfar, istighfar. And as Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah said, at the end of the night, subhanAllah, the believers, those that spent a good portion of the night praying, and those that spent the majority of it sleeping, يَجْتَمِعَانْ fi akhir layl They meet at the end of the night, right, right before Fajr. And the people that prayed a lot, يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِقُصُورِهِمْ They're seeking forgiveness because they feel like they didn't do enough for the deficiencies in their good deeds. And the people that slept a lot and that didn't do much, يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِذُنُوبِهِمْ they're seeking forgiveness for their sins. They're seeking forgiveness because they slept too much of the night and they wanted to do more. SubhanAllah. But the point is, at the time of suhoor, right before Fajr, hum yastaghfirun. They are seeking forgiveness. What's the practical benefit of this in Ramadan? No matter what you did during the night, those last moments before Fajr, you know, alhamdulillah, we're staying up most of the night, these nights anyway. Instead of trying to gulp down all your water, make sure you leave some time for istighfar. At the end of every single night. That is the practical benefit, the most immediate benefit we can take in Ramadan. Every night at the time of suhoor, right before fajr, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Put it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the practical benefit in Ramadan. Outside of Ramadan, when we talk about the continuation of habits, there is nothing like istighfar. Istighfar in the morning and in the evening. You know, you might not be able to do all of athkar as-sabah wal masa. You might forget some of the morning remembrances and some of the evening remembrances. But don't forget Sayyid al-Istighfar. If you, you know, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha la ant khalaqtani wa na'abduk until the end of it. The very famous chief of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best dua to see forgiveness with. If you don't get to read all of them, at least say that one in the morning and in the evening between Asr and Maghrib as Maghrib is about to come in. If you forget the athkar during the day, remember that the Prophet ﷺ said, I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least a hundred times every single day. Then let istighfar be at the top of your list. And remember, istighfar is the preventer, the great preventer of harm coming to us in this life and the next. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he will not punish us while the Prophet ﷺ is amongst us. Or وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ While they're in a place of seeking forgiveness from Allah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been taken away from us. He passed away alayhi salatu wasalam. His sunnah is with us but he passed away. But we still have istighfar to prevent harm from coming to us in this life. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Nuh alayhi salam mentioning to his people, seek forgiveness from Allah and good things will happen to you in this life. And on the day of judgment, nothing purges the sins from the records like istighfar. وَيَعْفُوا عَنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ And Allah overlooks them and pardons them. 
اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa taala every day and every night and remember before you before you pray fajr the last part of the night astaghfirullah 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 and how can you lose hope in a Lord that has not lost hope in you may we never be amongst those that despair nor those who are deluded by their complacency or by their good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always find us in a place of seeking his forgiveness and striving to be better. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.